Welcome to another visual basic video tutorial and in this particular video tutorial we are going to look at how you can save data into my SQL database from the visual basic code so let us get started as you can recall we from the our previous video tutorial which was a uh, kind of the introductory video tutorial we had looked at and tested how you can make a test connection to my SQL server. So I'm going to use that particular project. So I'm going to open it. Let us wait for it to load and open. The, the window has loaded successfully what we need to do. Uh, as you can see, we have our previous pattern from uh, the project which we were running. So the first thing, let's head over to our SQL uh, database sub, uh, management server. So on your favorite browser, just uh, as I told you, I'm using some as you can see, type localhost, then under the PHP, my click on php my admin to get to the back end of this particular my sql server let's wait for it to load then we shall proceed from there yes once the loading is done what we need to do this is the database that we have been using you can create a new database by going to the menu here which is here and then click uh, create new you give your database name but i'm going to proceed with the database which we have been using previously and as you can see we have one uh, database uh, table so i'm going to drop this particular table i'm going to create the new one so that you get a feel of what it is like so having done that then the thing you need to do it is to uh, give the name of your database here you are tape i mean then you here you can give the number of columns that you need for me i need three so after that setting click on go once that one is done we give the field names here i'm going to give it the id then the id is going to be auto increment so it will automatically be incrementing itself here i will give it the first uh, name then we shall have uh, a last name uh, then we change it this to the variable character then this one also to variable character the length which i'm going to give is 50 50 you can feel free to give them uh, the name whenever uh, the uh, length that you wish so after that is done click on save that is good and as you can see currently our table if you browse it doesn't contain any data so let's jump back to our visual basic application and this is the form we were using so we are going to take some labels so let me get a label from here and drop it on the form another label we need an input so i'm going to take <coughs> So I'm going to take an input here. So we are going to take our text box, take it one. You can copy and paste that. There is no arm, then resize this to the way it is needed. So having done this is going to be we edit that to we give it a label of uh, first name 
then you press enter this one it is going to hold the it is going to hold last name that is done now we want to resize this to the appropriate uh, size so just select both of them and reselect them to your size which you want <clears throat> so the other thing it is to take a pattern and this pattern we are going to use it to sell to handle the click events of saving data to the database then say uh, change the text on it to save so once that one is done i also want to change the pattern name so come down to the name property so this is going to be called the btn save uh, pattern so once we have done that you can resize this one so that you can accommodate the text so nicely so i want to take this one because it was to enable us to test the connection so let it be in there for purposes of reference <clears throat> once we are done just double click on this particular pattern to get to the behind the scenes of coding that is also done now we are going to progress remember we are in the same form this uh this particular this particular um, those particular variables they apply to whatever procedures we are going to be creating in this particular class and also remember to do the import on my sql client that is the one which is going to enable us to connect since i've done i've pre-written uh, the sum of this uh, code so i'm going to take um, before that i want to rename some of uh, my text inputs so so also that that uh, it can enable me to continue so go back here go to the form design this one we want to give it a name of uh, change the name uh, this one from text box one to text first name the other one that we are going to change its name property it is this last name so the last name we are going to take it to <coughs> we are going to take the last name and change its name property to txt uh, txt last name so once we are done with that we can now go back to the code and proceed with the coding process so i'm going to copy and paste this particular piece of code then I will continue with explaining what is uh, really transpiring here. So I'm going to take this code and copy it, paste it here. Yeah, that is that is it. So let me explain what is uh, going on here. So the first thing. the first thing which we are doing inside this particular save event we are click a pattern first we are instantiating the connection to the database in short we are establishing our connection to the database then we are giving uh, the connection string which contains our our credentials as I told you, you can uh, change this one always to the IP address if you are on a, on a networked environment or you are using my SQL server which is hosted outside your perimeters of command. 
then we are giving the username that is the root which i'm using currently i'm using the local host and i've not set any password here we are saying that when you are executing this just use the database called test in our case i will have given it to test then uh, normally here i'm instantiating a variable or i'm just declaring a variable called the reader and i'm giving it to my sql data reader which is just a, a function or a method for that case a method in that case which is contained inside my sql client the other thing yeah once we have done that then we are grabbing the text which is con we are declaring two variables here called first name and last name so that they can hold the text which we are going to input in these two fields after we have done that now here we are getting we are getting the text from this which has been input particular uh, text box then we assign it to the first name variable the other one we are we are also repeating the same for the last name and here we are declaring in the try catch proc for the first thing we are doing it is we are writing our sql query which is insert to if you are familiar with sql this is a normal sql so we are inserting into users table which is this particular table which we have created here we want to insert the values for the first name as you can see and the last name only because the rest it is auto increment and then the values this this ampersand sign it is a way that we concatenate or join a string or strings in visual basic so we are just taking that particular value which is contained in the first uh, uh, name variable and appending it to our query and we are repeating the same unlike other languages whereby you can uh, you terminate a statement using a semicolon here we are not using that so the we proceed then we open the connection to our database uh, after that then from the variable command which we had created on top here we are just assigning it <coughs> we are assigning it a new instance of um, a sql command which is used to now execute this particular actual query that we have written here so it takes in uh, two parameters that is the query which is this one then the connection which you've opened here that is very crucial because you have to pass those two parameters for it to work after that then we commit that particular uh, query to the database so that the change uh, so that it can be taken from the temporary storage in the memory then transferred into the database and the table we have uh, intended we return a message a success message after which then we clear uh, whatever uh, text that is contained in our field so that they can be empty if in any case there is an error we just try to catch that in a, a try in a, in the catch section then we print it so that we can know what is the error so save your work and let's uh, compile our project and see what happens So once the combination is successful, you will get this particular form popping up. Well, let us now try to do some entries and see whether it is a success. So I'm going to enter 
and Joffrey. Then the other one is Obino. Click on the pattern save. As you can see, the data was saved successfully. Let us see whether that is indeed the case. So just go to the browse and refresh your table to see that you can see that the data has been captured successfully. So let's make another entry here. I'm going to enter here Lamek, then Nyakoe. Save that particular work and you can see that the return there it is successful. Refresh. That is it. So you can see the entries are coming. So that is it for this particular video tutorial. I would like to request you to like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, also share with your friends so that we can grow the channel together. Thanks for taking your time to watch and I hope that you've learned something new in this particular video tutorial. Thank you.